Welcome to The Record Show, your virtual spin around the vinyl industry. Brought to you by Radio Wasteland Records. Yes, Midland has a record store. Here's your host, Jim Gleason. Well, greetings from the Wasteland and welcome to this edition of The Record Show. We've got a cool one coming your way today. We'll start off with some late breaking news about a problem with one of the Record Store Day releases. We'll get caught up on all of this week's new releases headed to an independent record store near you. And I'll admit I was wrong about one of these past Record Store Day releases that turned out to be actually pretty cool. But first, I'd like to welcome back to the record show someone who's been off for a few weeks. Not off, that's the wrong word to use. How about busy, much like we are here. Ken Norton from Ingram Entertainment. Ken, how is it going, sir? Hey, okay. How you doing, Jim? <laughs> Good. We are recovered almost from Record Store Day drop number one and looking forward to getting into the July uh, 17th drop. And I think that's when your work starts back up all over again, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Uh, having back to back, we're actually working right now on the next drop and getting it all lined up, ready to go. Well, I'd like to get to the new releases for this week, and we'll do that in just a couple of minutes. But we had a lot of new customers uh, come in over Record Store Day. And as both our store and the event, the Record Store Day event continues to grow, more and more people are becoming aware of it. And I think a lot of folks are curious as to how this whole system actually works. Now, Ingram Entertainment is a distributor, a one-stop, as uh, as we call them. But uh, I think folks would be curious to see how stuff gets from the artists and the labels going through you guys and how it gets to us ultimately at the independent record stores, especially as we're heading into another drop in July. Okay, sure. Uh, it's It starts with, uh, of course, the stores, like the Radio Wasteland, placing their words with us uh, before we place our orders with the labels. So we have a pretty good idea of what people need or looking for. Uh, and we place orders uh, to that number plus some for and to allow for extras to be sold or you know, if, if any got damaged in shipment or lost and that sort of thing, try to cover as much as we can. Uh, so what ultimately happens though is record store day titles are by nature one shot, you can only order them at one time and limited runs um we all kind of know what those limited runs are up front it could be anywhere from usually bottom levels might be 500 yep. to 10,000. but you know there are i lost count of how many record stores are participating in record store day now but i think it's it's north of 2000 right wow yeah i think it is and so uh, if they pressed only 2000 or something all stores could only have one if everybody wanted it, you know, uh, 10,000 might sound a lot, but 2000 stores, uh, you know, it could go pretty fast. If everyone wants five of a new Prince or raise against machine or whatever it is, there might not be enough to go around. So that uh, gives you a limited run. And we try to, as a distributor, be very fair to all the customers stores uh, as we can to get, make sure everybody gets at least some, of everything that we can get our hands on uh and it just really varies depends on the on the demand which is can be higher than the supply in a lot of cases yep well and by nature i think that's what record store day and the record store day organization is really set out to do is to offer some releases especially some of those lower runs to be highly highly collectible kind of a thank you to the vinyl enthusiasts out there and that demand that you said really does skyrocket for some of these releases it does it does you're exactly right i mean in terms of of a fan which i'm you know, sure we, we are both that too yeah <laughs> uh you know that if this is something you really want you have to act on the date you know to make sure you get your copy uh and uh and that's usually the case actually there's some left over afterwards but it's not it's a small percentage usually uh and uh you know it's 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 fun. It's cool. It also helps our record stores out by just making a, a very concerted day for stores and people to go to them. It's always a lot of fun. Now, I'm also curious. I mean, what happens? I place you. You mentioned that uh, I place my order with you guys, and you determine at that point, as fair as you can be, you know what stores in your roster get how many of each release. But 
there is a lot more, and I'm, I'm talking logistics behind that. What happens after that and how much work is it for you guys? And I know you've got a big warehouse system, but can you give us a little peek as to how that works? Uh, let's see if I can give you a shorthand version. So sure. <laughs> we receive, uh, then we receive the product. We place our orders with uh, the labels, let's say Warner Music. And uh, we wait on the product to show up. They tell us what we're allocated in advance. So we have some opportunity to start allocations for the stores uh, before we receive the product. But when the product ultimately gets here, we still may have to make adjustments because invariably, you know, there were 200 plus titles in this particular drop. I'd say uh, those maybe 10, maybe 20, as much as 20 percent. We didn't get exactly what they said they were going to send us either because of shortages or lost boxes or maybe damaged product. You know, vinyl is just so fragile. So uh, so then there's a second wave of allocation based on what we actually get, you know, sellable versions of the, the final product. Uh, then we create orders in, for our warehouse who stage those, depending on how many number of days away it is. And uh, in this case, we have to ship from the East Coast, the warehouses and on the East Coast. Uh, shipping West Coast first and all the way across the country, uh, either using UPS or, or truck lines, depending on the size of the, the orders. Uh, we track all those to make sure they get there on time and, you know, communicate to, to the stores what, what they're getting, when to expect it, and that sort of thing. And then if there's any issues with the shipping of it, you know, we'll, we'll deal with that. Uh, that's probably the last step. You know, and I think that the folks waiting in line, bless their hearts, they don't realize how much goes into that day right? So that the stuff is in the store when the doors open on, on that particular day of the drop or a record store day proper. There's a lot, a lot behind the scenes. Sure. And it's, the turnaround is pretty darn quick. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, late record store day product is, is uh, you know, almost useless because people really yeah. are there on the day. And if it comes in late, you know, that defeats the point entirely. And I think, too, that, that I get a lot of questions here at the store. It's like, well, how many of this are you going to get? Or are you going to have this? And from my, from our perspective here at the store, I don't like giving that answer out until I actually see the vinyl in the store and the boxes mm. are open and I can count them. Sure. And uh, I think that's probably the best way to approach it, at least from our end, because of the nature. And you mentioned the short turnaround of these. Yeah, that's probably wise move because uh, people get very disappointed when you don't have what yeah. you think you're getting but for the vast majority you know when we tell the stores what they're getting they get them I, yeah. like i said we had over 200 stores that we shipped uh this time 250 plus now this now i think about wow. it and uh you know i probably said the average store got somewhere around 10 to 20 boxes and of those uh as far as i know only two went missing in shipment so that's that's actually really good, good considering the state of shipping lately of sorts but it is yeah and uh you know a few mispicks a few pieces that got bent or yep. uh, you know there's a problem with one title where if you open it up it's got the wrong discs in it and you know there's going to be a little bit of that completely out of everybody's control but uh then we have to kind of take care of folks on the back side now, do you guys run numbers as far as the percentage of the fill that the stores request is it uh normally run in the 80 to 90 percentage range of what is asked for? Uh, you're, you're exactly right. Uh, I'd say 80 is uh, probably about average for any record store day event. 80% fill uh, is roughly what we tell people to expect. And it runs that way, although it just depends on, you know, the mix of the stuff that the stores will work. Yep. And again, just to stress this, it's it, the, the whole process is meant to be as fair to everyone down the supply yes. chain is correct. Correct. It is. And in fact, uh, this year there was a additional involvement of the record store day staff in making sure that uh, each of the distributors received uh, a percentage uh, that was equitable based on the store orders that they received in the first place. Okay. Well, cool. Now you, we're going to turn around right, or right around and do this again in less than a month. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're getting it ready now. But the the long and short of it is, is that the product gets here and uh, if all goes right, folks have a great, great record store day. And we did here at our store, at least. So big That's thanks to you guys as well. Great, great to hear. It makes <laughs> me feel great. And, uh, you know, it's it's worth it. Uh, all, ultimately, all the work is worth it. Uh, a lot of happy people and a, and a really happy. great day at the stores. 
Well, Ken, given that the record store day drop number two is still a little ways off, we've got a little more pressing, see what I did there, <laughs> issues to hit, and that is this week's new releases. We, uh, we, we, haven't talked, we haven't talked in a little while about this, but the new releases every Friday continue to churn out, and there is some good stuff coming up this week, isn't there? Pretty good week, yeah, sure, particularly if you like it uh, hard and heavy. Uh, well, some of these are, <laughs> except uh, it's, a, it's a new record, I think. Uh, it's their 16th record, and it's on double glow in the dark vinyl. It's called Too Mean to Die. Uh, there's also a new Styx record. Uh, those guys still kick it around. It's called Crash of the Crown. Uh, and uh, on the collectible side, there's an Iggy and the Stooges collection. It's called Jesus Loves the Stooges. And that's on black and gold splatter vinyl. Cool. And uh, then two for the fish heads. Uh, LP, it's called... LP on LP1 and LP on LP2. Uh, both are live recordings, uh, limited edition on colored vinyl. See, LP1 is from 2019, recorded live at uh, the Alpine Valley Music Theater in Troy, Wisconsin, you know, before the pandemic. And then yep. the newer one, uh, is number two, was recorded live in May of this year. They turned that around super fast. Uh, wow. At, at their, uh, during their tech rehearsal in New York, uh, and that's on a, a blue-ish, uh, blue sort of swirl vinyl as well. So uh, those are coming out this Friday. And I think uh, fish vinyl always moves quick, and uh, it tends to be on the short run side too, I believe, a lot of times. Yeah, it can. And so for the fans, we want to pick those up uh, pretty soon. All right, Ken, well, thank you very, very much. And hopefully we'll get a chance to talk again next week and the week after, but we'll just kind of play it by ear as Record Store Day drop number two on July 17th hits. Yep, sounds good, Jim. Thanks very much. All right, have a good week, sir. You too. So one of the more interesting releases this past Record Store Day from drop number one was not a vinyl release at all, but instead a box set of cassettes. I'm speaking of the Motley Crue 40th Anniversary Cassette Collection. It was a neat little record store day item that was put out uh, to commemorate Motley Crue's 40th anniversary as a band. I know, <laughs> it's getting there. But it contained five cassettes. Motley Crue Shout at the Devil, Too Fast for Love, Theater of Pain, Girls, 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 and Dr. Feelgood. But there is news this week after Record Store Day that there is a problem with some of the cassettes contained in that box set. Now this is, it's really no laughing matter at all, but I cannot help but chuckle a little bit because there was a design flaw that led to creating a dropout in some of the tapes. It seems that some of the purchasers of the Motley Crue box set have found out that the box containing the cassettes had a magnetic clip to keep it closed. As most of us know, especially those of us who worked in radio for some time, magnetic tape and magnets do not always get along the greatest. So what has happened is, is that that magnet, as small as it is that holds the box set shut, has erased portions of the cassette tape that was kind of butted up against it inside of the box. Now, word is from the manufacturer that those who have purchased the cassette box set will have those damaged cassettes replaced, but it may take a little bit of time, sometime into July or August, before those can be recut and then sent out to the customers who bought them. In the meantime, though, they're offering some advice and they will be sending out some spacers to put in the box set to protect that magnet from destroying the cassettes again if you put them back in there. So future reference, those of you who design stuff, records are great. They will degrade over time, but cassettes, like any other magnetic medium that hold recordings, will degrade over time and much, much faster if you put them next to a magnet. Word to the wise. And finally today, they say it takes a big person to admit when they're wrong. And for me, well, that happens a little bit more often than I'd care to admit. When this year's Record Store Day list came out, there was a release on the drop number one side of things that intrigued me until I read it a little bit more closely. It was the Repo Man soundtrack, but as it turns out, it was the Repo Man Tribute 2 done by American Laundromat Records. 
Now, Repo Man is one of those soundtracks from the 80s that I just feel need to be reissued. So many great bands, so much great music on that original soundtrack album, and it's a rare one to find. So I was excited when I thought that uh, Record Store Day was going to give us a release. And I'm not sure if it was due to the licensing or what, but they decided to go with this American Laundromat reissue or tribute to that. Now, originally, American Laundromat released this as a compact disc in 2012. And there is some cool music on there, and you can hear previews of that uh, various channels around on YouTube. So when I saw this on the RSD list, I was skeptical. Again, wanting that original, or at least a reissue of the original. But after listening to a few of those bands, I got thinking, hey man, this is actually pretty cool. Usually I am a sucker for good cover tunes, especially when they're cover tunes of great music like were contained on the original Repo Man soundtrack. And this does not disappoint. In fact, this was my only pickup during the Record Store Day drop number one. And I am happy that I've got it. And I'm not too big to admit that I was wrong about being skeptical about this. It has got some great covers of the original tunes. You've got artists on here like Those Darlins covering Repo Man, The Polar Bear Club doing Black Flags TV Party, and an artist named Amanda Palmer along with the Grand Theft Orchestra doing the suicidal tendencies Institutionalized. So it's sitting in my room and I was just, you know, staring at the wall, thinking about everything, and, you know, then again I was thinking about nothing, really, and my, my mom came in, and I didn't even know she was there, and she called my name, and I didn't, I didn't really hear her, and she started screaming, Amanda! Amanda! And I go, what, 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 what's the matter? And she goes, what's the matter with you? And I go, there's nothing wrong, Mom. And she goes, don't tell me that. You're on drugs. And I go, Mom, I am not on drugs. I'm fine. I was just... Other cool groups include the New York Rivals, Black Francis, and Spanish for Hitchhiking. The Tellers, covering Pablo Picasso, which is actually a cover of a cover on the original Repo Man soundtrack. The song was done by Burning Sensations, but originally that was done by Jonathan Richman in Modern Lovers. This never happened to Pablo Picasso, Pablo Picasso, Pablo Picasso, Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso. We also have a couple of other ones here uh, from the Suicide Dolls. Matthew Sweet doing Ombre Secreto, the Secret Agent Man cover. Moses Coltrane and Weekend on here as well. The other big surprise on this, though, was that Mike Watt and the Second Men covered Fears, Let's Have a War, and they let the original lyrics go through on this, which could be considered problematic these days. Now, the other cool thing about this release is that it appears to be on clear vinyl, but it's actually glow in the dark. Now, just how glow in the dark? Let's take a look. Well, this is a bit underwhelming. The glow in the dark does work, but not with LED lights and not really enough to show up on camera. Now, the glow in the dark vinyl does have a tie in to the movie itself. Hopefully you've had a chance to see this cult classic to know what we're talking about. What is in the trunk, man? Okay, so the American Laundromat Records presents a tribute to Repo Man is a limited run. In fact, the Record Store Day drop only had 1,500 copies to go around of this version. So it could be on the rare side if you go looking for it. But if you're a fan of the original movie, if you're a fan of the original soundtrack, as I am, this is a great, great placeholder until such time as we get a proper reissue. What are you trying to say? Should be in an 
I'll probably get hit by a car anyway. It's fine. Thanks for watching The Record Show. If you haven't done so yet, please make sure to subscribe to the Radio Wasteland Records YouTube channel. And be sure to hit that notifications bell so you'll be alerted every time we upload new content.